Do you recognize this setup? Newsflash, it's the same day I filmed the last one, so Otis is still making noise and my cat will probably come and interrupt me again. But anyways, I have the April 2019 Art Snacks box, so let's see what's inside of it. So the April 2019 box, everything is wrapped up in here. And normally that means like pencils and stuff. So we'll see where this goes. Here's our menu and then the candy this month was a Laffy Taffy. And our sticker is very interesting this month. It's a cool like, I don't know, like I guess indie arrow pattern. But I'm excited that it's just not the pencil one again because I have about five of those. So let's unwrap all of this again. Oh, Otis wants to play. And I've ruined the tissue paper. Nope, okay, maybe I've saved it. Mm, yeah! <laughs> I'm getting better at this. Maybe by the next one. Oh! Maybe by the next one, I won't rip the tissue paper at all. So, just four art supplies in this one. But I bought, so the boxes normally retail for 26, I believe, when they're on the shop. And then if they're a really old box, they'll knock it down to 20. And then the sales that I usually go for are 40% off to 50% off. So I believe I got this box for $10.40, both of the ones that I've done recently. Um, so I mean, I'm getting a great deal on these art supplies. Um, but let's see what they are. Um, I'm gonna go with this one, because that's the first on the menu. It's the Caron Dash Luminance Colored Pencil. Light, fast, and permanent. Subtle velvety effect, and I have it in no color name. I have it in this like salmony pink. Okay, so this pink Caran d'Ache Luminance colored pencil. Um, Here's the Zebra Sensations double-ended brush pen. So, it's got these, it has those same like plasticky nibs that are like, they're not spongy, but they're not like, they're not plastic either. They're, they're slightly flexible, but it's not like a Copic um, marker nib. I don't know how to describe it. They're really interesting to draw with um, and I like them a lot. So I am kind of excited about this one. This should be interesting. And then Iron Lock Pump Action. Nope, that's not it. Iron Lock Pump Action Paint Marker. This is a chonky boy. Um, wow. A seven millimeter chisel tip. Um, and I've got mine in this purple, this violet color. Once again, no color names. I like it better when there's color names. <gasps> there, oh my gosh, guys, there is a color name. It's called Purple Rain, and rain is in, like, royalty. Wow, I like that a lot. Oh, Meatballs decided to join us. I don't know if he'll come into shot, but if he, if he does, consider yourself blessed by my cat, Meatball. Um... I'm excited to use this. I'm hoping it's gonna work like a Posca pen um, because it is a paint marker um, and it's huge. So probably background stuff. I have no idea what I'm gonna draw with this stuff, guys. Um, and then lastly, the Pentel Orens One Click Mechanical Pencil. So supposedly you only have to click it once for the lead to come out. And perhaps the first time you have to click it twice because this little silver thing did come out, yes, but at the end right there, that's the lead, that little tiny bit that's not even showing up on camera. I'll click one more time. Oh, okay. 
sure. I don't know, I'm not... Art Snacks just wants me to use graphite and, you know, I don't want to. But I guess I will because it's mechanical, and mechanical maybe I'll do better with. No eraser, though, on this mechanical pencil. So, maybe one click might be nice. But, uh, no eraser is not nice. Uh, so that's a mark off in my book. But, um, I don't know, maybe the one click will make up for it. But I, I don't know, I love clicking my mechanical pencils. Like, when I was little, I don't use them anymore. I've exclusively used pens in college, but... We'll see. Oh, I'm not supposed to extend the lead beyond the pen. See, there's a whole sticker warning me. Oop, boop, boop. There's a whole sticker warning me. Ah! Do not advance lead beyond the pipe. Okay. Ning. Alrighty. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Once again, through the magic of editing, you guys are gonna appear in my basement with my art set up all done in less than five seconds. And I'm the one who's going to have to set it all up in much more than five seconds. But I'll see you there. Hey guys, welcome to the voiceover. So I had absolutely no idea what I was going to do for these supplies. I was racking my brain. I was like pink and purple. What do I do? And it's a very dark, almost like eggplant purple. So I took to my sketchbook and did some thumbnails, which I didn't show you guys, but if you look on my Instagram, you can see them there. I think I really, the only idea I had was some kind of dramatic lighting, um, because the pink was nice and bright and it could go on top of the paint marker, and uh, that's kind of where I took my uh, inspiration, because the paint marker I knew was going to have to be the background because it was so dark. Um, I did see you could water it down and use it almost like as a paint if you had like a nice plastic surface, like a um, Ziploc bag, or I used a Frisbee that I had laying around that I sometimes use for a paint palette. Uh, and I just bounced off from there. What are things I could do with the dramatic lighting? I thought of just a simple character design, maybe like facing a window or something, but I didn't really have any inspiration. I thought of maybe a very dramatic kind of realism portrait. I was kind of on a realism kick lately, um, but nothing really got me until I started thinking, you know, it's mermaid and I haven't drawn any mermaids yet, so maybe I can think of some sea creatures and I thought of the classic anglerfish, the glow-in-the-dark guy, the super creepy fish from Finding Nemo, um, and I even put like in my thumbnail, like as soon as I drew an anglerfish, I was like, oh my gosh, an anglerfish mermaid. Um, and I thought that would be an interesting take on a mermaid because normally they're like these pretty things, but then there's like a, like a horror mermaid, um, like Pirates of the Caribbean style, like they're pretty and then she uh, lures you in with her, with her light and you think she's this beautiful mermaid and then she turns around. So that was the inspiration for the pose and, um, the whole picture. And so I always start off sketching. I didn't really like the mechanical pencils, but I don't think that's the fault of the mechanical pencil. I just really don't like the look of sketching in graphite anymore. I haven't done it since middle school, and it always kind of brings me back to middle school. And even though my sketching has gotten much better since middle school, it just, I don't know, it just, that association in my mind can't go away. So... I didn't really like it. It worked very nice. It was very smooth. Uh, and I was working on watercolor paper. So very thick, toothy paper. Um, and you did only have to do like one click. But once again, I don't really see the point of one click. I never was like, oh my gosh, I'm clicking this pencil so much. Even when I did use mechanical pencils. I guess it's a fun kind of like gimmicky feature. But it was 
it was just whatever. Um, I still dislike graphite. I still dislike working with graphite. I'm left-handed. I just don't appreciate it. Um, other artists can do amazing things with graphite. I just think it makes it look like I'm drawing on lined paper in my social studies class and my teacher is about to yell at me to put all my art stuff away. But otherwise, the sketching process was very simple. I just drew the basic form and um, I had her looking over her shoulder, kind of as if somebody's found her or... Um, yeah, almost like kind of caught by surprise. Like, I don't think she was luring anyone at this point. Um, or maybe they were following her and she didn't know it. And so when they finally turned around thinking, you know, it was going to be this beautiful mermaid or something. And she turns around and she's very upset um, and very scary. Once the sketch was done, I did a quick little erase over the top and then started filling in the background. Um, the erasing over the top of the sketch is something new that I've started doing just to kind of help get rid of the pencil lines once you're uh, inking. It helps you to just um, focus on the lines that were most important in your sketch and clean it up a little bit before you start inking so that way you don't ink the wrong lines. Um, using the paint marker was awesome. It didn't run out of uh, paint. Ki like Posca's kind of, um, when you're drawing with them, they run out and you have to pump them again. I colored this whole background without having to pump it very much at all. And then I used almost a dry brush technique um, to do the like edges of the background. Um, to give kind of a cool effect and then like I said before I used a frisbee Colored on the frisbee a little bit with the marker and then used water to water it down to color in the mermaid and then The rest of the drawing was all about getting the lighting and the shading right and I'm not certain if I achieved that very well But it is an effect that I want to start playing with my art normally my art is very flat and I don't do a lot of shading at all um, if any <laughs> um so this was a fun way to try and learn it and make a really cool effect with um, the watercolor effect you could get with the marker and the lighting effect you could get with the pencil. Um, one thing I would change maybe is, um, I, I don't know, I guess paying learning more about the planes of the body uh i just kind of shaded her back any old way and didn't really regard anything about like how it should actually look so it makes her just kind of seem kind of like a, a tin can almost like i just colored her kind of like a cylinder and that works for now but i'd like to learn and grow more um, and do fun dramatic lighting effects like this. I also need to learn how to backlight a subject. Um, this, this piece, she's not exactly backlit. Um, I imagine her, um, I don't even know what it's called, her angler, her lure, I believe. Uh, I imagine it slightly in front of her face, but her body being, um, just a little bit uh, under it and diagonal from it, I guess. I can't really show you guys with my hand motions that I'm making, but I am making some to try to help me out. Like, her face is being lit by it from the side and almost, and almost in front, and then her body is lit from the side, but more towards the back. Like, the front of her body would be lit like her face and the back of her body lit almost as if the light is coming from behind but it's still slightly above if that makes any sense but 
things I like about this drawing. I do like the effect that I was able to get. I really love how the pencil goes over the purple marker. And I loved the versatility of the marker, being able to use it as just like an acrylic paint. Things I would like to improve. I didn't really take into consideration her hair. She kind of just looks like a bald mermaid and then she's got this splash of hair that's just attached to her back. Like her hairline is behind her lure. So I didn't really know how to do that. And then I like forgot that like hair goes in front of your ears. So like why doesn't she have any hair in front of her ears? It was all just guesswork for me. I didn't really plan too much. I just dove right in without much thinking or much thumbnailing. I did do a couple of thumbnails, but not enough to figure that stuff out. Uh, so I would like to do her hair better if I were to redraw this and draw her arms better. I need to get better at arms and how they attach to the torso, how they attach to the back. I'm still kind of learning how to draw backs and I think that's why I had tro uh, trouble lighting it because I don't really know the anatomy of a back. Uh, I've been drawing a lot of characters from their front mostly so um, I've never really had to think about the muscles of the back and how the shoulder and the arm connects that way and so on and so forth. So I'm trying to get into more dynamic poses and more anatomy work so I can improve and do cool like pieces and illustrations. Um, lining. The zebra brush pens, they are... Well, they're not exactly a brush pen. I don't remember their exact name. I'm recording this quite um, quite a while after I uh, filmed this. The zebra pens, they are so odd. Like, there's such an odd texture. The Like I was saying when I was unboxing it, they are not exactly a sponge, but they're not like a hard plastic nib, like a like a Bic ballpoint pen, they have some kind of flexibility and give, but it's not, it's not a felt tip marker either. Um, they're very interesting. I'm very fascinated by them and their inking is nice. Um, I didn't have a lot of trouble. Um, I think the only time it had some trouble was where the pencil was, the colored pencil was a little waxy. And it was hard for that pen to go over it, but otherwise, um, very even ink flow, like it claims. There were some times where it skipped and I had to go over again. Um, the line variation is insane with these pens because of that interesting nib that they have. It's almost like a Crayola super tip, not in texture, but in versatility. A lot of people learn calligraphy on Crayola Super Tips because they have that kind of um, versatility. And then lastly, I did some details in her tail and a little bit more shading here and there to kind of give her a little bit more dimension, even at her out. Um, finished up the inking and then I thought I was done. And then as I was looking at her, I was like, oh, I don't think I'm finished yet, but I filmed like these slow-mo shots to look so you guys can see what we made and here they are panning down and her in all of her glory and then I was like you know she just kind of looks like an eel she just kind of looks like flesh she needs some scales so this last clip is me dotting on the scales um, very quickly and I didn't film another pan over shot but this is what we managed to make today. I am continually challenged by these Art Snacks boxes. And if you guys drew along, let me know. I'd love to see it. Tag me in your art at Gotta Go Draw on Instagram. And I would definitely love to check it out. If you want to see more from me and more of my videos, I would greatly appreciate a like and subscribe. It really helps me out. And I will see you guys next time. Bye for now, guys. See you later.